for solidarity. I got it. I'm joined by Father Sean McManus, but who is the chief judge of the World Peace Prize, and I will be introducing him later. I'm Barbara Flaherty. I'm the executive vice president of the Irish National Caucus, and I'm a judge of the World Peace Prize. Our late beloved President Richard Trumka worked closely with us on the promotion of the World Peace Prize. And he was very happy that we made the connection between labor, solidarity, and peace. And therefore, there's no better way to begin than to hear the words from the great man himself. Jen, can you play the video, please? Yes. Where did it go? I had a queue up. Hold on one second. <clears throat> Very good. Uh, first, let me thank uh, Barbara Flannery and Father McManus and all those that were involved uh, in, in bestowing this uh, great prize. And let me say that I'm very, very deeply honored. Uh, to receive this award uh, on behalf of uh, the working people of, of this great country. You know, I also want to thank the World Peace Prize Awarding Council for recognizing uh, the nexus and the connection between organized labor and peace. Uh, too many times in the past, uh, we're not looked at as being part of the peace process. Uh, and the recognition of uh, fighting for social justice and its connection to peace uh, is it, very much appreciated uh, by all those that have gone before me and whose shoulders that all of us stand on. So we want to thank the World uh, Peace Prize Awarding Council for recognizing uh, that connection. Sometimes, Father, we even have to fight with ourselves because sometimes we forget our own lessons and have to go back and relearn those lessons and fight just a little more and a little harder and with a little more intensity. But as we stand here today, I'd say, let's never stop fighting darkness uh, with light. Let's never stop fighting scarcity with abundance. And uh, let's never stop fighting hate with love. And let's never stop searching and reaching for a lasting peace, for a social justice, for an economic opportunity for every last soul out there, so that every kid that gets born anywhere in the world can go where their brains and ambition can take them, rather than where their daddy or mommy's pocketbook can send them. Uh, I want to say thank you for this great honor, but like every honor, uh, no one does any of these things alone. Uh, the fights that uh, I started in some instances are still going on. Uh, the civil rights fight that uh, I was involved in in the 60s still continues to this very day. The fight for health care for everybody continues to this day. The fight for fairness on the job continues to this very day. The fight to end poverty uh, and bring uh, fairness in a country that is so blessed with so much uh, continues to this very day. And here's the only thing I can promise you. I'll continue working with all those that have given me the light and given me the courage and given me the guidance to go forward in the fight. And hopefully uh, I'll be able to provide some of that guidance and light to those behind me. But I can promise you this. So long as I draw a warm breath, I won't stop fighting. Stop.
Thank you, Jen. Uh, we have a short PowerPoint. Now, I'm not going to read every slide, but we'll go through it quickly. Uh, Jen, would you put the PowerPoint up, please? Yes, ma'am. Okay, here on the left side, we see um, Dr. Hanman Su, who founded the World Peace Prize. And of course, this slide shows Father McManus, who's now the chief judge of the World Peace Prize. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, on the right-hand side, it shows Father Sean McManus and myself in South Korea when we were inducted as judges of the World Peace Prize. Next slide, please. Uh, this was at Pre President uh, Trump's first induction into the World Peace Prize as roving ambassador for peace. And this is what he said. I know that Father McManus has moved the needle on solidarity, justice, and peace in Northern Ireland. And Father, for that, I offer you, on behalf of the entire AFL-CIO, a sincere thank you. And this was a February 3rd, 2016. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Uh, this was also at that first induction. And we see on the right-hand side, Father speaking to Liz Schuler, who was then the secretary treasurer of the AFL-CIO and now is the president. Next slide, please. Okay, this was also at the first World Peace Prize and we see on the left, President Trumpko with his medallion and on the right hand side with his plaque and in on the right hand of uh, Mr. Trumpka is his wife, Barbara Trumpka. Can we have the next slide, please? Okay. Uh, President Trumpka received the second uh, tier, which was labor leadership. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Okay. Uh, President Trumpka had agreed to receive the final tier, which was the World Peace Prize for Solidarity. But the pandemic happened. He was also working on President Biden's election. And then unfortunately on August 5th of that year, he died. But President Schuler said there was no one more deserving of this honor than President Trump. Can we have the next slide, please? Um, Teferi Gebre at that time, 2017, was the executive vice president of the AFL-CIO, and he was one of the recipients of the World Peace Prize Roving Ambassador for Peace. Can we have the next slide, please? Here we have President Trump and Father McManus, and they were prepping for one of the next awards that was to happen. He was always welcoming and wanting to help us. Can we have the next slide, please? Okay, this slide shows um, Liz Schuler, who then was secretary treasurer at um, Elizabeth Powell's induction. And she said, thank you, Barbara Flaherty for the kind introduction. I also want to thank Father Sean McManus for his leadership and vision, as well as Reverend Dr. Hanman Sue and the entire World Peace Prize Awarding Council for everything they do to build a better world. There is a crystal clear connection between the labor movement and peace and justice in our world. It is a central part of our mission our history and the work we are proud to be leading today. It doesn't just land in your lap. You have to fight for it. We are striving for peace and justice for all working people and working women are leading the way. And this is what said in February, 2019. May we have the next slide, please?
Uh, Father McManus has had a long history with the AFL-CIO. We see him here with the former president, uh, John Sweeney, who also received the World Peace Prize Roving Ambassador for Peace Award in 2016. May we have the next slide? Here we see Mark Dimenstein, who's president of the American Postal Workers Union, and Elizabeth Powell, who's secretary treasurer, and Father McManus at the headquarters 2016 when Ms. Powell became roving ambassador for peace. May we have the next slide. This is Terrence Melvin, secretary of the New York State AFL-CIO who also received the World Peace Prize Roving Ambassador for Peace. May we have the next slide? And this is Nash Dr. Everett Kelly, who was National uh, Secretary Treasurer of AFGE, but now he's the uh, National President of AFGE when he received the World Peace Prize Roving Ambassador for Peace. May we have the next slide, please? Here we have General President Sean O'Brien and Greg Floyd of the Teamsters when Greg Floyd received the Roving Ambassador for Peace Award. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, here we have uh, uh, Mo Billard, who was president of the American Postal Workers Union from 1980 until his retirement in 2001. And next slide, please. And President Brave, I think you recognize one of these men, Teddy Gleason, who is president of the ILA, and also George Meany, who was president of the AFL-CIO, and this was in Val Harbor, Florida in 1974. Next slide, please. Here we have um, Patrick Campbell, who was president of the United uh, Brotherhood of Carpenters. <laughs> Teddy Gleason again, and we have Tom Donahue, who was secretary treasurer, and then president of the AFL-CIO. Uh, next slide, please. We have a history of Father McManus and the American civil rights leaders. Here we see him with Martin Luther King Jr. III, and they were together picketing the British embassy on St. Patrick's Day in 1988. And that's in the top photo. In the bottom photo, Cesar Chavez, who, who was president of the Farm Workers Union, also picketing um, on behalf of Ireland at the um, British Embassy on St. Patrick's Day. Can we have the next slide, please? Um, here is John Lewis, who was, um, Congressman John Lewis, and he was also picketing at that British embassy. And in the lower picture, we see um, Representative Joe Kennedy II, who was also part of that uh, picket at the British embassy. And we have the next slide, please. Here we have Montserrat Garibay, who was um, former secretary treasurer of the AFL-CIO and she received the World Peace Prize Roving Ambassador for Peace. And now she works in President Biden's administration. Can we have the next uh, slide, please? And here we have uh, former Congresswoman Marsha Fudge. She was a longtime friend of the Irish National Caucus. And her quote is, I applaud your tireless work to ensure reconciliation for the people of Ireland and forge a beloved community where people of all backgrounds and faith can live free from discrimination and prejudice. With looming uncertainty regarding the future of the Irish border, now is a critical time to commit to fulfilling this vision of unity and prosperity. And our final slide, please. And this brings us to our distinguished honoree today, President Brave. Let's hear it for President Brave. Thank you, Jen. You can close the uh, PowerPoint. Okay. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to introduce to you Father Sean McManus, President of the Irish National Caucus and Chief Judge of the World Peace Prize. Sean. God bless the South Carolina AFL-CIO <clears throat> and God bless President Charles Brave, our brand new laureate of the Richard L. Kramka World Peace Prize for Solidarity. We are honored to honor you, President Brave. Now, over and above your already trailblazing career, you now are the first state president of the AFL-CIO, <coughs> excuse me, to receive this prize, the very first state president. That says a lot about you. And I hope it also says something about the values and priorities of the World Peace Prize. You see, we not only present the World Peace Prize to award worthy recipients, but also to promote the four social values of truth, justice, love, and freedom, based on the four social principles, namely the intrinsic dignity of each person, the common good, solidarity and subsidiarity. And President Brave, we know, like President Trumpka did, that it's one thing being a pre state president in a strong labor union state, and another thing altogether being state president in South Carolina, the weakest labor state in America. We know that that takes special commitment. And dedication. And indeed persistence. So ladies and gentlemen, let me now give you a quick little background to the World Peace Prize. It was founded in 1989 in Seoul, South Korea, by the late Reverend Han Min Soom, a Presbyterian minister. His vision was to form a World Peace Prize awarding council consisting of representatives of the nine major world religions who would serve as judges on the World Peace Prize. You all know the major religions. Let me mention them, Judaism and historically Catholicism, Islam in the sixth century, then in the 1500s, all the Protestant denominations. And of course, in the East, the great religions of Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Confucianism and Zoroastrianism. Dr. Han Min Su had become familiar with our work for justice and peace for many years with the US Congress in Washington, and he prevailed upon us to join him in his good work. We were already too busy, but he was a very persistent man, God rest him, and we caved in, we give up and said, yes, we'll help out. So Barbara Flaherty and I traveled to Seoul, and as she mentioned, we were inducted as judges. And while there, I was selected as the chief judge of the World Peace Prize. And from that moment, we set out with two objectives. One, to assert the fundamental truth and basic principle that peace is the fruit of justice. That working for peace means <clears throat> as Dr. Martin Luther King taught, working for social justice. Our second objective was to firmly place the American organized, organized labor movement in the category of those who should be considered as worthy recipients for this World Peace Prize, because the labor movement works 
day in, day out since the late 1800s for justice and economic dignity for working men and women. We were able to make the connection between a religious group of organizations and the labor movement and the World Peace Prize, because you see all major religions in the world, all of them believe that God, the love of God and the love of neighbor is the same thing, the same commandment. And because the love of neighbor means in effect, this is what it means in effect, doing justice and building up God's kingdom on this earth. The famous American Protestant biblical scholar, the Reverend Walter Brueggemann puts it very clearly and very powerfully, quote, in biblical faith, the doing of justice is the primary expectation of God. In biblical faith, the doing of justice is the primary expectation of God. And of course, Jesus Christ himself makes it profoundly, totally clear when he told us, in so far as you did it, to the least of my brothers and sisters. You did it to me. No more powerful statement has ever been made. Also a memorable quote from Pope John, the, uh, Pope John Paul II from one of his great encyclicals on, on human labor uh, made our task of linking, of making this connection very easy. The Pope reflecting on the adage that peace is the fruit of justice says this, today one could say with the same exactness and the same power of biblical inspiration, peace is the fruit of solidarity. You see what the Pope did here? He raised solidarity, <coughs> excuse me, to a virtue, not just a slogan, not just a motto of a labor movement or anyone else. He raised it to a virtue. So my friends, you see, faith is the faith that does justice. And you know what? There is no other faith. There is no other faith. If faith does not do justice on this earth, it's not faith. Not the Jewish faith, not the Christian faith, not the Muslim faith, not any faith. And the wonderful thing about putting social justice at the core and center of everything is that people of no faith but of goodwill can also agree in principle with this. And that is very important. When we returned from South Korea, the first person we went to see, of course, was President Trumpka. We told him about our idea of linking the labor movement to the World Peace Prize. He loved it. He, he got really excited and he couldn't even wait to hear me out. He said, listen, I want in, how can I help? And then he immediately said he would send a letter out to all the labor leaders, introducing me to those who didn't know me. Uh, and urging them to take my call when I called to speak about the World Peace Prize. And then he said with wonderful uh, generosity and, and energy, I, I will put it on my official AFL-CIO stationery. 
so that everyone will know it has the backing of the AFL-CIO. And of course, President Trump knew that he would have to introduce this to the labor movement for us because, you know, Barbara and I couldn't do that by ourselves. He could as president of the AFL-CIO. And he did that not because he needed it, but he did it to spread it through throughout all organized labor, to spread it in South Carolina and to all of you down there. So he accepted all three prizes that Barbara mentioned, and he was had agreed to accept the final one the World Peace Prize for Solidarity, and then he was taken into God's eternal rest. We had hoped then, of course, to be able to posthumously present that award, the Ordinary Solidarity Award, just named the World Peace Prize for Solidarity to his family. And we were delighted to, to be able to do that on January the 5th, 2023. We presented it, as Barbara indicated, to uh, the Trumpke family, to young Rich, Rich Jr. And, and Mrs. Barbara Trumpke. And then we decided that the proper and only thing to do was to rename the Solidarity Prize And we renamed it to the Richard L. Trumka World Peace Prize for Solidarity. And we were very honored that the Trumka family welcomed his this renaming of the prize as did, as you heard, Liz Schuler uh, as the new president. And then, of course, that meant we had to select a new, new candidate, which we've been doing. And this little explanation of the history and significance of the Richard Trumka World Peace Prize for Solidarity in and of itself, I hope, explains why the big man there, President Brave, is today the recipient of this prize. Because, because he personifies the President Trumpka spirit of solidarity, of determination, and of dedication to social justice and to the union, and a lifelong commitment to economic justice for American working women and men, and therefore for all people, locally, nationally, and globally. Finally, let me mention this. In further honor and memory of President Trump, the World Peace Prize now refers to American organized labor as organized love of neighbor. Thank you, solidarity forever, because what? Because peace is the fruit of solidarity. I now hand you back to Barbara who will direct the presentations. Thank you. Thank you, Father Sean. President Braid, will you come forward with the person who will present you with the plaque and the medal and introduce them, please? And Father Sean, from this moment, you can direct the receiving of the plaque and the placing of the medallion. Yes. Barbara, you're on mute. Ms. Barbara, you're on mute. You're on mute. I, I don't know why I should be on mute. Okay. Okay, I'm better now. Sorry, 
Uh, President Brave, please come forward with the person who's going to present you with the medallion and the plaque and please introduce that person. Oh, um, well, there we go. Let's see you holding the plaque, uh, President uh, Brave. I'm and say congratulations. I'm and now place I'm the uh, plaque to one side. You're taking photographs. Go ahead, take. Take some photographs. Big, Big smile. smile. And now, please. Um, Place it around his head and shoulders. And again, congratulations, President Brief, a worthy recipient. God bless you. And President Brave, will you come forward now and make your acceptance speech, please? Or are we having a photograph taken of him? Acceptance speech. With his medal. First and foremost, yeah. I would say thanks to the Almighty God. And, and keep your medal on as you give your acceptance uh, remarks. All right. Thanks to the Almighty God for that. When I was conceived in my mother's womb, life has taught me that this day was all day. I uh, did not know that I would be receiving an award, but I guess I want to say thank you, Father McManus, and your organization for actually nominating me to accept it. Um, I could say this much, um, you said um, in your speech, um, how probably difficult it would be uh, being a state fair president in South Carolina and in the South. No, it is not easy. But as I stand on the shoulders of other great leaders, especially President Trump, who I'm honored, uh, to stand on his shoulders and uh, to be under his leadership to help me get to where I'm at today to receive this award. And I wouldn't have probably been the first leader that I've been if I didn't have a wife by my side. When there were times I would just cry because someone had hurt me just that much in the state of South Carolina in the leadership. But I hope what one songwriter said, if I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can just cheer somebody with a word of song, then my living won't be in vain. I also reminded about God Forces of scripture in a letter that Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. Paul said that, for we walk by faith and not by sight. That's why I didn't really see this award, but I kept the faith. And I'm just waiting because I know that the same God that came back for President Trump to, and maybe some of the other award recipients that transition from labor to reward is going to come back and he is going to crown me with his award of all. Then we are going to be able to 
crown King Jesus together with all of the recipients that's going on before me. We are crowned the King of King, Lord of Lord together. And it won't happen until that great day. I would say to my board members who helped me to achieve the work that I do and that we are doing in the state of South Carolina. One of my favorite folks that I like to say, and I say it every time I'm addressing someone, that if you change South Carolina, you will change the South. And if you change the South, you will change the country. So I would say to each and every one on this day that I will cherish it to the end. And I know my son told me that he probably wasn't going to make it today. But I'm glad that he is here. Because I can remember in one of the greatest labor struggle that I've been in in my life and in South Carolina, free to Charleston Five. When I was facing 30 years to life, with two charges hanging over my head, and setting a riot and trespassing. When even the night that I was arrested, my wife begged me not to go. And I told her I had to go. Even when I was in jail, I sent in Ken Raleigh and you tried to get money from my wife to get out of jail. And Kenny could not get in touch with my wife. My wife said, I told you not to go. And when I fought and we was in that struggle, I got so weighted down. And I called my son. That's the son. Daddy needs you. Strong daddy. I said, man, I'm in trouble. I need you to pray for me. And he said, Daddy, meet me. And me and my son met on 26th between Columbia. And he prayed with me. And God knows God answered our prayers and the five guys who was left in that struggle. And some of my weakest moments yet, and some of my hardest challenges now. My greatest prayer partner is my son. And I could say I try to live the life for my son as Paul did to Timothy. He said, Fight the fight of light with faith. And do the hardship because my departure is at hand. And I would say to South Carolina, and I would say to everyone, God continue to bless you. Keep the faith. People do for a night, but joy do comes in the morning. In the morning. In solidarity forever. Your work will never be in vain. Continue to plant the seeds, and God will grant you peace, solidarity, and love forever. Just remember hate don't drive out hate, love drives out hate. May God bless you. Thank you, President Bray. Those are powerful remarks, and we thank you very much. But before we conclude, I want to give special thanks to Jen, whose assistance was invaluable, and to Miss April, 
and to your IT person who set up the video and PowerPoint and this whole Zoom, we're very, very thankful to all of you. And I want to say God bless you. And we're very happy to have been part of this ceremony of a most deserving laureate. And now the speaking part of the program is over. God bless you all. And Jen, you can close the Zoom now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.